it seems that the only consequence for NVIDIA's actions, which I think are deceitful, is more money. That's the consequence. They get more money. It's working. This is NVIDIA's newest chart filled with, by our belief, actual lies. This deceitful chart filled with manipulative bullshit represents the RTX 5060 as being 90x better on the nebulous relative scale with the 4060 at 45x, seemingly with the GTX 1050 at 1x resulting in a 5060 that's 9,000% better than a 1050 and a 3050 with DLSS that's somehow significantly better than an RTX 5060 without DLSS, which absolutely is not true in any possible way. NVIDIA has contorted itself in such a way that its own worse, older cards somehow look better than its new ones. Better still, there's two 3050s and they don't specify which one it is in that chart even though they are different products. And this is exactly what we believe NVIDIA wants reviewers to do with their charts and it's what we spoke out against back in May of this year. Now, NVIDIA today has taken a few more grains of sand off the beach to manufacture its latest round of e-waste, manipulatively named the RTX 5050, even though it'll probably barely be able to handle rasterized games, let alone real-time ray traced ones. At a baffling $250 and excessive 130 watts, the RTX 5050 fails to do anything that the prior 50 class cards did. Its power consumption is too high to utilize without a power connector, so that eliminates that use case, and its price is too high to make more sense than a used card for the same price. Right now, sold eBay listings show an RTX 2080 Ti 11 gigabyte GPU for $250 the same price that the 5050 won't be available at. Or perhaps you'd prefer the RTX 3080 top for $300, probably the price of some of the 5050 partner models, or an AMD RX 6700 XT for $210, an AMD RX 6800 16GB for $295, still with a warranty, or an RTX 4060 for $228, a 3070 Ti for $250, or any number of other GPUs, including new ones like the B580 from Intel, also listed for $250 to $300. The point is, nobody should buy the trash that Nvidia just announced. NVIDIA's own blog post talks about how the 50 class cards are desired for the power consumption being low, and yet this one requires an 8-pin power connector and pulls 130 watts. This already kills a potential use case of these low-end cards, which is a GPU that doesn't need a power cable, like the old GTX 750. Then again, the 750 was low enough TDP that there were even passive models available. The RTX 5050 has 2560 CUDA cores that are at least Blackwell generation. The card advertises a 2.57 GHz boost clock and a 2.31 GHz base with a memory of 8 GB on a 128 bit bus. Some historical data would help, and so what we've put together today is a bunch of charts we're going to flash through them really quickly that show the MSRP inflation adjusted prices. We'll show CUDA versus memory bandwidth on the cards over time. We'll look at some benchmarks, and we'll even look at some of NVIDIA's propaganda. So let's get into all of that. We brought you this video with store.gamersaccess.net and a special commemorative relaunch of our original mod mat design. We haven't made this design in about four years now, but some of you have been asking us to re-release it. We're posting these on the store now as what is likely our last run of the first ever GN mod mat design that we introduced originally in 2017. Of course, we still have the GN15 designs in stock if you want to grab one of the newest versions of the mod mat. This new run of the first mod mat involves our newer and more advanced printing and QC processes, improving upon the original production runs starting in 2017. The design features the GN teardown style logo, a large GPU screw tracking grid, a pinout diagram for common power connectors, and also includes a common ground point and wrist strap. We also just recently restocked more of our copper-plated stainless steel mule mugs with thermal conductivity on them, so head over to store.gamersaccess.net to grab the mule mugs or the limited rerun of the original mod mat design. Thanks for your support. Let's start with some of the numbers. This shows the MSRP and inflation adjusted prices of the 50 series dating back to about 2009. Price has clearly climbed significantly in the last two generations. The average MSRP for this card going back 16 years is $157, or $196 when adjusted for inflation. When eliminating the 50-50 and the 30-50, the average inflation adjusted launch price is $180. So it's clearly getting more expensive, and we think that Nvidia's data for that earlier relative scaling chart should be used as a piece of evidence in the next action against it. But there's more to this. This chart shows the percentage of cores that a 50 class card has against the 60 class counterpart as measured against the percent of the price that the 50 class is of the 60 class. In other words, the RTX 5050 is 83.3% of the MSRP of the RTX 5060 and yet only 67% of the CUDA core count. We've never seen numbers this bad from Nvidia with this series of low end hardware. The GTX 1050 that Nvidia claims a 9000% improvement against was 43.6% of the price of the GTX 1060 non-FE with 50% of the CUDA 
CUDA core hardware. The 1650 versus 2060 was similar. The GTX 650 might have been the last era that was as off balance against consumers as the 5050 is, but that was back when NVIDIA released multiple 50 class cards with the 660 Ti and 60 Ti boost. This chart shows the bandwidth versus the price. With the 5050, you're paying 83% of a 5060 for 71% of the bandwidth. This has been getting worse since the 3050s, but before that, it was better. The 1650 versus 1660 had about a 67.7% of the price to 66.6% bandwidth ratio, or 42.6% of the 2060 price for 38.1% of the bandwidth. These are closer to or even at parity. Going back further, the GTX 1050 was 43.6% of the price of a GTX 1060, but with 58.3% of the bandwidth. The GTX 950 was also favorable at 79.5% of the price for 94.3% of the bandwidth. And one of the things that NVIDIA is doing is leaning on these relative charts to show how much better their new GPUs are than Sometimes there are other new GPUs by accident, but that's, that's how relative scaling works. Unfortunately for NVIDIA, it goes both ways. And so we made our own relative charts. Maybe this chart shows it best. This shows NVIDIA's cards by CUDA core count percentage relative to the flagship. If they can do it, we can do it too. We defined the methodology for how we track 90 class, Titan class, DI class cards in our NVIDIA shrinkflation video. That video defines how this chart is made and what choices we make when there are multiple choices. The new RTX 5050 is the worst GPU that NVIDIA has launched in any GTX or RTX card series on this chart, meaning not counting the GTs or GTS. It has 12% of CUDA core count of the flagship. Now you could argue that this is in part because the flagships have gotten better, and that's true. But at the same time, everything else has failed to scale with them or gotten worse while getting more expensive. The 5050 is another of those cards. In fact, even the 5060 is more similar to a 1050 than a 5050 is. And if you want a card just for encode and decode or something, it might be time to seriously consider Intel, or maybe at least consider using an art card as like an accelerator or something. We'll talk about that more in the future. And for gaming, we'll bring it back to used. It's time to seriously consider options like those we spoke about earlier. Make sure they're sold working, not just for parts, but it's normally listed, and you can get better cards for cheaper. Let's take a look at some charts without the 5050 to see what an onslaught it's going to be when the 5050 is added to those charts. And we are going to buy one and we are going to add it to the charts because buying the RTX Pro 6000 wasn't a problem, so <laughs> buying the 5050 probably won't be a problem. NVIDIA's own RTX 3060 Ti has done well to show how ridiculous the newer cards look. These charts are from our 5060 review, where the 3060 Ti is about equivalent to the 5060, with the 4060 different by single digit percentages. Or this chart, where the 5060 is nearly tied with the 6700 XT that can be had for about the same price as a 5050 on the used market has more VRAM, and actually is fast enough to use it. Or take a look at the 3080 here, which runs at 5060 Ti and 4070 levels. Multi-frame generation cannot bring a 5050 to this experience. It is at best a smoothing technology, and we have videos about that. And then there's the 2080 Ti in this chart, which has it below the 3070 Ti, which we found sold listings for, working for $250 on eBay. That's for the 3070 Ti. A 5050 is not going to be able to run this test at all. So if we want to play bullshit relative number games, we can do that. Our chart will have other cards, mostly used ones, at infinity, <laughs> and the 5050 at zero because you can't divide by zero, so I've decided that means infinity. Isn't stat math for marketing fun? And we can produce more charts to prove the same point repeatedly, but what we're gonna do is save that for our 50-50 review and produce probably 20 to 25 minutes of those charts proving the same point repeatedly, so you can check back for that. Now, all this comes at a time when NVIDIA is experimenting. It's grown up now, it's become a big boy, and it's a real monopoly. So it's playing around currently somewhere in the range of that sure is a nice engineering interview you have there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. And experimenting with providing drivers only to so-called reviewers who will produce preview pieces under strict guidelines, like for the 5060 launch. Propagandizing for NVIDIA is the new thing. We've seen it since May. So in our opinion, Games Radar, which is owned by the same publisher that owns PC Gamer, Tom's Guide, and Tom's Hardware, was complicit in NVIDIA's propaganda when it received early driver access at a time when NVIDIA was actively preventing independent reviewers from testing its 5060. Games Radar said the 5060, quote, feels pretty slick for under $300, end quote, in its coverage with limitations seemingly dictated by NVIDIA, not to mention that it's deceptive to call 299.99 
quote, under $300, especially when that often is actually above $300. Tom's Guide, also owned by Future Publishing, published an aligned indoctrination campaign, in our opinions, on the same day as sister publication Games Radar, stating, quote, Spoiler alert, when tested under NVIDIA scenarios, the games live up to, and in some cases slightly exceed, the company's performance claims, end quote. That is as clear as day to us. It says NVIDIA's scenarios. Tom's Guide also said, quote, you're going to have a great time at 1080p with DLSS 4 being the backbone to all of it, end quote. In its, again, what we think is a complicit PR campaign with NVIDIA. GameStar Tech in Germany also ran an article with driver access when other reviewers who had the 5060 were blocked from testing, stating via machine translation, quote, NVIDIA gave us the opportunity to run benchmarks under specific conditions ahead of the RTX 5060's release, end quote. GameStar defines the restrictions, which is actually pretty useful for us here. It says this, quote, only measurements of the RTX 5060, 3060, and 2060 Super are permitted. We are only allowed to run benchmarks in the five games Avowed, Doom Dark Ages, Marvel Rivals, Cyberpunk 2077, and Hogwarts Legacy. Both the resolution, 1080p, and the graphics settings are fixed. A crucial factor here, while the RTX 5060 can utilize quadruple multi-frame generation, older GPUs don't allow additional frames to be generated using AI, end quote. This is my opinion, but this is your future. I'll be fine. We have other things we review. We're ramping on our investigations, our special reports. We have the case reviews. We've been doing factory tours and educational content. We're good. We have content to produce and we'll even still review NVIDIA GPUs. What I'm worried about is that this has now gone beyond marketing. We're at a point where NVIDIA is, in my opinion, actively attempting to deceive consumers. Not just marketing, deception. That's what I think this is. And I think it's abusing its market position. It has 92% market share now. NVIDIA is actively damaging the enthusiast and gaming industries and hobbies. And this is something that not just I think. Speaking with a lot of other companies in the space, and we'll have something on this in the future, uh, one of the things that we've come to appreciate is that the companies that don't even make video cards, as in not even the partners of NVIDIA, also share these feelings. And we'll talk about that in the future. But as of now, NVIDIA is a monopoly. It is that simple. And now, rather than simply enjoy their monopoly with their 92% market share, NVIDIA, it seems, chooses to exploit the littlest guy in its customer base, the end user. And NVIDIA is doing so not only by weaponizing friendly media into a propaganda machine, but also by straight up lying to its customers, I think, about their performance. If the GTX 1050 runs at 12 FPS in a game, even with MFG 4X, the 5060 would have to run at 1,100 FPS to be 90X better than it. That's assuming that this is even based on something halfway reasonable and not just loading the 1050 to a point where it literally can't run the game but we're not here to defend the 1050's honor because I don't care about it. And this is a stupid comparison anyway. And that is because the stupidest thing on Nvidia's chart has to be the 3050 with DLSS outperforming its own 5060 with it off. Or the fact that they chose not to put a 5080 on here because their carefully concocted bullshit would yield the 3050 with DLSS outperforming the 5080 stock. This is another one of the times in my career where I've been genuinely mad about how a company is treating consumers. And I'm not talking, this isn't like YouTube, we're doing it for the memes mad. Like this isn't engagement mad. I am genuinely mad about how Nvidia is treating people. And the reason is they are, I think, abusing their market position and there's nothing anybody can do about it. If you wanna compete with Nvidia, go ahead. Take a look at Intel. How's that been going for them? It's taken a while to even start to get off the ground and they needed billions upon billions of dollars of assets and employees and know-how to even get started with it. And this is a situation where it can feel relatively powerless. I mean, there is some power in choosing what to buy, but they have over 90% of the market. They've got a lock on things that require CUDA. I can barely do my job without CUDA because of Adobe software. That's not something I control. I mean, there's things we've experimented with, but you get the point. It's just that NVIDIA is so domineering that even when you're upset, look at our own recommendations in this video. Go buy a used NVIDIA GPU. There's some used AMD ones out there too, the 6800, the 6700 XT, the 7700 XT is not bad for the price when it's used. But the point being that almost anywhere you look, 
all roads do appear to go at least towards NVIDIA. They might not end there. They might end at, fuck this, I'm buying a console. But a lot of them go there. And so yes, for this, I am actually mad about it. And it's not for the camera mad, it is mad. I mean, it's to the point where when I'm walking around, not at work, this is bothering me. And the part that bothers me is NVIDIA's abuse of its position and that it seems the only consequence for NVIDIA's actions, and here what we're talking about today to remind you, is continuing to manipulate the stack of cards to make them look better than they are and to play these games with things like this relative performance scaling chart that will trick a lot of typical end users, people who don't follow this stuff. But the thing that bothers me is that it is actively damaging the scene and it seems that the only consequence for NVIDIA's actions, which I think are deceitful, is more money. That's the consequence. They get more money. It's working. So we'll test the 50-50. I look forward to calling it a waste of sand or DOA or saying don't buy or whatever. And I know that's what it's going to be because I can look at the specs and the price and I know what the conclusion is. It's easy to predict. We also look forward to testing NVIDIA's claims. But for us, even without testing it, we'd recommend a used card at the same price. Recommending used cards is worse for us in one way because we don't make affiliate revenue from that but I'd rather have people actually excited to build computers and enjoy them the way that I have gotten to enjoy them for the last couple decades. And in so doing, getting GPUs that they don't feel ripped off about or that they don't feel leaves a bad taste in their mouth after buying. And I'd rather forfeit that affiliate revenue and people do that than turn into a feckless shill from a propaganda outlet like what Future Publishing was doing with NVIDIA, in my opinion. So that is where we are at this point. NVIDIA it's going to get worse. Like this is the future. It's a question of how much the media will play these games with NVIDIA. And there are outlets that I trust will continue to be holdouts and will continue to do the right thing for consumers. To name one of them, Hardware Unboxed. We just met with him at Computex about a month ago and did a couple videos. But the point being, you know, we're going to keep reviewing these cards. We'll buy them. Uh, again, people like Hub will continue to review the cards and there'll be content out there it's just like this is this was kind of a news video about the 50/50 but it's also just look at look at what they've done to my boy <laughs> look, at, look at what they've done to PC gaming i think that's what this turned into as i started writing the announcement of the 50/50 and um it's bad it, this is not this is not in a good place like that Nvidia can produce the kinds of materials it is producing. It's not enough to just be in control and be able to sell every fucking thing they make. They have to then go ahead and put together these charts that, again, I think effectively lie actively about what it does. If you're gonna sell it anyway, just sell it. Like I said last time, don't drag the whole industry down into your bullshit, Nvidia. That's it for this one. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus. And we'll see you all next time.